Okay, guys, welcome back. This is the last part of our test review. So numbers 11 through 20. Let's get through this. Black math. Give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black math. All right, number 11. Consider the equations. 2x plus 2y plus 2 equals 0. 7x plus 7y plus 7 equals 0. Are these equations consistent? inconsistent or dependent. Okay, so there's several ways you could do this. We could try to graph these two and see if they intersect. If they intersect, that's good. That means they're consistent and they're independent. Independent means they're not the same equation. Dependent means they're very clingy. They're right on top, they're the same equation, okay? And then inconsistent means they're parallel. So if they never intersect, then they're, then they're parallel, all right? Or we could, Try to simplify both of these equations and see if it ends up being the same equation. I think it does. Watch this. If I divide both sides by two here, and you can do that, you can do whatever you want to one side as long as you do it through the other, what do you get? X plus Y plus one equals zero. And then divide both sides by seven in this equation. Look what happens x plus y plus 1 equals 0. So these are the same. So here's the deal. These guys are consistent because they're not parallel and they're but they're dependent. Okay? So if we were to graph these, it would have looked like this. They would have both looked like this. Okay? So that was the blue one and then the red one would have been right on top of it. Okay? So they're consistent because they're not parallel, but they're dependent. They're very clingy, all right? The other thing you could have done, done is solve by elimination or substitution, and then you would have gotten zero equals zero. All your variables would have canceled. It would have been disastrous, okay? So this works, all right? Your, your question on the test will probably be very similar, so don't stress this too much. All right, number 12. This is, we had one like this on the last test. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're just gonna rewrite each of these in scientific notation first, okay? So right now they're just kind of a gross mutation of scientific notation, scientific notation and standard notation. All right, well this guy, I'm gonna ignore this 10 to the fifth right now. It's very important that you ignore, ignore it. The first step to putting stuff into scientific notation is to put the decimal after the first non-zero digit, right there. Okay, that's where our first non-zero digit is. So we're gonna go 4.5, all right? But then you have to multiply by a power of 10 that will bring it back to where it started. So we put it there, now we have to bring it back to there. So one, two, three, four to the left. So that's negative four. This is all still times 10 to the fifth, all right, but let's change this guy. How do you write 7,000? Well, put the decimal after the first non-zero digit, so seven or 7.0, then multiply by a power of 10 that will get you back to where it started. It's right there. So three to the right, and that's all still times this 10 to the fourth, okay? So now when you, when you multiply across, you get 4.5 times seven, which is 31.5, and then times your powers of 10. Well, all, when you multiply powers of 10, all you're doing is adding the exponents. So negative four plus five is one, plus three is four, plus four is eight, okay? Let's do that same thing to the bottom. First, I'm gonna write this. This is five times 10 to the fourth. Let's put it after that five and then move it back to where it was, times, Let's do this one. Nine times 10 to the, okay, we put the decimal there. So one, two, three, four to the left. And that's all times 10 to the third. Okay, add those or multiply those across. You get 45 times 10 to the four plus negative four cancels. And then you just have three there. So you have this division problem. Well, use your calculator. How many times does 45 go into 31.5? That actually goes in 0.7 times. 
and then you're multiplying your powers, you're dividing your powers of 10. Remember, when you divide powers of 10, you subtract the exponents. So eight minus three is five. So you have 0.7 times 10 to the fifth. Are you done? No, you're not done, okay? Because this is not in scientific notation. Well, let's rewrite this in scientific notation. This is seven times, what did you do? You, you put it there, so you have to move it back to where it started, times 10 to the negative one. And that's all times 10 to the fifth. Some of you guys can do that in your head, this last part in your head, but don't take your chances. I wouldn't. So multiply the powers of 10, seven times 10 to the fourth. Okay, number 13. All right, we are gonna, we are gonna drop an F-bomb on this. Okay, so remember your F-bomb is your least common denominator. What's the least common denominator of four and three? Well, that would be 12. So we're gonna multiply both sides times 12. All right, so we're gonna multiply that by that, that by that, because we're distributing, and then we're just doing that. All right, so I'm gonna rewrite these separately because it'll be easier. Minus 12 times this guy, x over four. Now I left room here because how do you multiply fractions? You need it to be over one. So I'm just gonna do that. So now look what happens. I can cross reduce, I get one and four. I can cross reduce here and I get one and three. And this one just equals negative three times 12 is negative 36. All right, now look what happened. I got ones on the denominator, so now all these guys go away and I'm left with this. Four times four is 16, plus four times x is four x, minus three times x is three x, equals negative 36. All right, so do you see why we did that? Otherwise we would have had fractions. So this 12 was our F-bomb because it killed all the fractions in the equation with one bomb, all right? So, first step, solving equations. Simplify both sides separately. There's no parentheses, we just got rid of them. So now combine like terms. What's four X minus three X? X equals negative 36. Skipping the second step, because we don't have variables on both sides. Third step, get rid of constant on variable side. Get rid of that 16. So X equals negative 52. Cool. All right, number 14. We are going to write an inequality whose solution set is described by the graph shown below. Okay, so remember, if this was like a solid line here instead of dots, and it was at 1, and it just went this way. Well, how would you say that? Well, this is just X is less than or equal to one, right? Well, it is, but it's only dotting here. So these guys are not part of the solution. So what kind of numbers are these? Well, that's where our domain comes in. We have to specify our domain. So our domain is what kind of numbers are these? Well, you've got positive whole numbers and you've got negative numbers that are not fractions, so those are integers, all right? So this is our final answer. So we're gonna just kind of get rid of that. So X is less than or equal to one and our domain is integers. If you said X is less than or equal to one, you're right, but you need to be more specific because one half is less than or equal to one but see how it's not shaded, it's not dotted, okay? So you have to specify a domain. The, dom the domain is just integers. Finally, we get to factor some stuff. All right, let's factor this. First step, the factoring. Look for a greatest common factor. There is one, there's an X. We can pull an X out of there and we get X squared plus eight X plus 15. So see, if you distribute this back, you'll end up with that. So we're going backwards. All right, now, second step, look for a difference of two squares. Nope, this is a trinomial. That's the third step, look for a factorable trinomial. We do have one, okay? Because there are two numbers that multiply to get 15 and add to get eight. It's, it's three and five. So X plus three, X plus five, done. All right, number 16, so exciting. 
We're just multiplying, okay? So we're just gonna distribute. This is like a double distributive problem. If it was just x times this, it would just be x that, but it's four plus x all in a parenthesis times that. So we're gonna do this. So let's try to follow the, the orange lines and then we're gonna do this. We're gonna multiply the x times everything. So everybody in this parenthesis dances with everybody in this parenthesis. So four times x squared is four x squared. Four times two x is eight x. Four times three is 12. Okay, now let's multiply the x times everything. X times x squared is x cubed. X times two x is two x squared. And x times three is three x. All right, last but not least, combine like terms. There's no other x cubes. So we're just gonna leave that alone and I'm gonna put that first. So I could have started with x squareds, but I wanna write it in descending order because it's beautiful. All right, look at the x squareds. There's two of them. There's four plus two is six x squareds. Look at the x's. There's two of them. Eight plus three is 11 x's. And then it looks like you just have one constant. So there's your final answer. Awesome. All right, 17 and 18. We're gonna add these, t these, these fractions. Okay, now everybody I think struggled with this a little bit. Um, and this is crazy because we have this plus A and it makes it look like A is a factor of this. It's not. This is its own separate snobby little factor, okay? So let's first kind of deal with these guys. Well, how do you make this A look like that A squared? We'll just multiply by another A, okay? So this guy needs another A. Whatever you do to the top, do to the bottom. And so if this, if this, these guys have A squareds, this one needs an A squared. So I'm gonna multiply this times another A squared. Okay. All right, well, that means these two fractions need a B plus A. So this needs a B plus A, and this needs a B plus A. This needs a B plus A, and this needs a B plus A, okay? So now they all have the same denominator, A squared, B plus A, A squared, B plus A, A squared, B plus A. So let's clean up this top and clean up the bottom and see what we have, okay? gonna distribute that so we get 4b plus 4a all over a squared b plus a minus well let's simplify that that's just 2a cubed because it's a times a squared all over a squared b plus a plus well let's distribute that 3ab plus 3a squared all over a squared b plus a. All right, now the last step, since we all have the same denominator, we're gonna combine like terms over one big chubby denominator. Let's do that. Any other b's? No, so let's just write 4b. Any other a's? No, there's a squareds and a b's and stuff, so let's just write 4a. All right, minus, there's only one thing that we're subtracting, so any other a cubes? Nope, so 2a cubed, plus no other a b's, and no other a squareds. That's it, that's just a lot of details, and technically when you add, it should look simpler, but it actually looks more complicated, but the goal was to make three fractions into one fraction, and we did. All right. Let's simplify this, number 18. We're just gonna multiply, we're just gonna distribute first. So this is just three radical two times five radical six. So that's 15 because three times five is 15 and then radical two times radical six is radical 12. Minus, simplify that, 24 radical eight. Okay, so far so good. All we did was distribute three radical two times five radical six and then three radical two times eight radical four. So now we're gonna simplify these radicals. Now, a lot of you struggled with this as well. We're going to break this up into two factors. The first factor 
is your biggest square that you can find in 12. That's four. So square root of four times the second factor is whatever wasn't the perfect square, okay? So this is all still multiplied by 15. So see how this is the same thing as this? All we did was take out a per, uh, square root of a perfect square and then a square root of a non-perfect square, okay? All right, minus 24 times, well, how does square root of eight factor out? Well, there's a that's a square root of four times a square root of two, all right? Let's simplify. Well, what's square root of four? That's just two. Two over there. Okay, so we're, we end up with 15 times two, radical three, minus 24 times two, radical two. Okay, so we can simplify this just a little bit more. This is 30 radical three minus 48 radical two, but that's it. That's all we can do because these are not right, like radicals. So that's your answer to number 18. All right, a couple more and we're done. All right, number 19, find the lateral surface area of this right prism whose bases and regular, whose bases are regular pentagons, dimensions are in feet. Okay, thank you for that information. So lateral, just the lateral surface area is just this, perimeter times height. That's it. Because if you unwrap this pentagonal prism, unwrap the sides, then you're just gonna have this one long rectangle, okay? And that rectangle is 25 feet high because that's what the height of the prism is. But what's that length? That's the distance all around it, which is the perimeter. So the lateral surface area is just perimeter times height. Okay, well, since it's regular, that means all sides are congruent. Remember that? Okay, so if one of the sides is 10, then that's gonna be 10 times five because it's a pentagonal prism. All right, pentagon means five sides. All times the height, which is 25. 10 times five is 50 times 25, well, five quarters of buck 25, so 125, but it's 50, so 1,250 square feet. Boom. All right, last problem, we're finding the volume. Okay, volume is just area of base times the height, which seems simple, but this is a crazy base, okay? Well, what's this area of the base? Well, this is just this semicircle plus this rectangle, okay? Well, what are the dimensions of this rectangle? It's a 30 by 16. So this is gonna be 480 square meters, all right? Well, what's the area of a semicircle? That's half a circle. Well, the area of a circle is pi r squared, so the, M the area of a semicircle is half of that. Cut it in half, all right? Well, what's our radius? That's all we need to know. Uh-oh, it doesn't give it to us. But we're gonna have to use our brains here. If this is our radius here, this means this is the diameter, which is 16. So that means this guy has to be eight. All right, so this is pi times eight squared, all divided by two, which is pi times 64, which is divided by two is 32 pi. All right, so this is our area of our base. And we're gonna multiply it by the height, which is 20. So you could leave it like this and just say 640 pi plus 9600 square or cubic meters. Or if that's too confusing, just multiply 3.14 times 32 which is just 100.48. And then you're adding that to 480. So you get 580.48. And then you're multiplying that by 20. 11,609.6, okay? So let's see if we get the same thing here. So 640 times pi is actually 200, is actually 2,009.6 plus 9,600, 
equals 11,609.6 cubic meters. So both of these answers are just fine. All right. Um, so you can get rid of that pi right away and 3.14 times 64 divided by two, and then you don't have to worry about all this weird stuff. So it's up to you, do what you want. But that's it guys, that is test 21, your last test. And this is my last video, I think, with you. So good job this year, you rocked it. Awesome, so we'll see you either in geometry or algebra two. Proud of all of you. You survived algebra. That's hard. It's hard to survive algebra, but you did it. Well done. Black man.